Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. Proudly hosted by me, Chris Little. Without further ado, let's get started. So, here we are. First time ever recording a podcast in a bar studio for episode 18 with Tracy Kalfish. 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 Yeah. It's the worst last name pronunciation I've ever done. But I tried. <laughs> it, it, is, it, it is. It's a doozy. It, it's a tricky one. It is. And the B is silent. Okay. So, Kalfish. It actually means uh, baby cow in German. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. How's your day going so far? Pretty busy? It's busy, but it's always busy. Good, it's a good busy, good. yeah. So take us through one of your busiest days of your week. Um, I would say every day is busy, probably except for a Sunday. That's where I kind of take my low down. But every day you wake up, you get the kids up, go out to school, off to work, make sure you're home to pick up the kids, afternoon activities, come back to work. So they're all busy, but it's manageable. It's all time manageable. So what time does your day start and what, what's the first thing that you do to start your day? Actually, I wake up at 6.30, get a hot cup of coffee, and I make my social media post before the kids get up. Oh, nice. So I have that from 6.30 to 7, make sure that that's done, usually by 7.15, and then I start waking the kids up after I have breakfast ready. And then as they're getting up, you know, you make the lunches, and they start heading out the door at 10 after 8. Last one goes out at 8.25, and I come to the studio to teach a 9.15 class. I may teach multiple classes, and then... Do the running around, whatever I need to do for the business and make sure I start my daily pickups at 2.49. Feed them supper, either come back to the studio or else go to sporting events. Nice. Mm-hmm. That sounds lively. I bet you never get bored, hey? No, no. It's, it's never boring. When you have five kids, it's not boring. So tell us a little bit about the, the studio that we're sitting in right now. So... This studio, it's called Sculpted Finery. I actually came up with the name of this studio because of a clothing line that I have coming out. So I initially started the clothing line and then opened the studio. So that's how that name came about. And in this studio, we offer bar, pound, and yoga. So they're all very different, very different workouts. Um, The bar, it's the isolated small movements. Pound is with the drumsticks. And I have a yoga instructor that's certified from Dubai. So, <clears throat> excuse me, she comes and teaches either in here, but I share the space with Inferno Fitness, or else she'll go and teach warm Pilates. Nice. So, mm-hmm. so how long have you been in this space? I opened October 13th of this year, 2018. So that's exciting. It is exciting, and it's, you know, still those days now, I'm like, what have I done? Why wouldn't I just go and... And work for someone but this is my passion mm-hmm. and sharing it with amazing people like Inferno Fitness they are amazing to share a space with it's different when you share a space but we are two different studios so our passes are separate our clients are separate so it's just but then we do offer that combination to the clients when they do come in so yeah it is exciting I do like to walk in and be like oh this is mine this is what I like and then you know even to see the kids look when they come they're like this is my mom's studio but yeah and then some days I'm like well oh, I, c- I could probably do without but no it's my passion so I can't ever really see myself do something else totally so. and mm-hmm. for people who don't really know your your backstory or how long you've been in the industry tell us about your origins how did you get started with with bar well I started to be certified for a group fitness instructor and then some paths crossed with some friends and I originally started at a bar studio in Shored Park 2000 the summer of 2013 had the opportunity to two years later to go and open my own studio and I did open and have a studio running in Windermere for about two and a half years And we have five kids and two have health issues. So after February, the end of February this year, it wasn't feasible for me to be traveling back and forth to Windermere when I was always at the Stollery and the Glenrose with my son. So I was very fortunate that I was able to leave that space and leave my lease. 
And it was a lot of getting my son better and recovering him. And then finally things seemed to be on track in September. I My path crossed again with Mel from Inferno and I just asked her, I'm like, do you have like a space that I can come and teach pound and just rent out from you? And she's like, well, here's the landlord's number. And within a blink of the eye, I was, had a lease and started painting. And it's awesome how things just kind of fall into place, especially with the people that you surround yourself mm -hmm. with. Like if we're kind of authentic to ourselves and passionate, people tend to, to get closer to that and they want to support that. Mm -hmm. Well, and the support is crazy from, I have had quite a few clients from Windermere, but even originally when I started in Shirt Park, Shirt Park clients would follow me to Windermere and now so many are happy that I'm back in Shirt Park. Yeah. So the, just the response of original people that I used to once instruct and, and do classes with. So it's, yeah, the response is amazing and just the support. And I'm from Sherd Park, so now I can come to the studio, drive seven minutes home or five minutes, do stuff with the kids, and then come back. So it doesn't seem like that big commute. I'm not away as many hours from my little people, so. Exactly, and that that makes a huge difference because, like, even for myself, my my main gym, I traveled like 26 minutes. Now I travel like four minutes. Mm -hmm. So it makes a huge difference, and like I. I could see how things could change as, as time goes by. Maybe I'll travel for certain things, but in, in this time right now, where I can train like 90% of the, the clients that I work with in a space that's super close to my house, it's mm -hmm. awesome. It, it doesn't seem as draining when you don't have to make that long commute. Yeah, And exactly. especially with the traffic now, and gosh, even the gas prices, I'm like, oh, thank goodness I don't have to drive all that way but it it does it seemed draining because mm -hmm. you're like oh I have to go home and then I have to drive back so it, it's a lot more enjoyable not Did having you that big commute. have a routine for your long commutes when you were driving over to Windermere yeah I pretty much just stayed there <laughs> yeah so <laughs> I would, yeah I'd go in the morning and I'd be there till after supper and you know you look back now absolutely no regrets but I look back now and wow did I learn a lot like learned so much and I think that's what pushed me because you know at first when you close a studio you feel like a failure and I'm like okay well I failed at being a business person and I feel like I was a bad mom but then my middle daughter she just looked at me and she's like mom it wasn't a failure look what you created look what you did and look what you learned from it she goes you just have to bounce back on your feet and move forward and what I learned from there to make this studio even better than what I had. It's, I definitely take it as the best business opportunity that I had. So I'm glad to be back on my feet and back opening here. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So a little backstory, you came highly recommended by Kelsey Jones, who mm -hmm. had hosted one of my episodes earlier, and she works with you for you at this studio as mm -hmm. one of the instructors. Uh, first, let's give her a shout out. When's her next class at? What time does she teach at? It is tonight at 5.45. Nice. Does yes. she teach any other times during the week? She does teach on Tuesday as well at 6.30. And then she teaches, we alternate weekends. So, cool. yeah. That's awesome. But she'll, she's having some time off from her full-time job over the Christmas holidays. So she'll be in the studio quite a bit. And she's amazing instructor. And you know when you go to a fitness class... And yeah, you like to get your butt kicked and that's exactly what she does. But the one thing, she can work you hard, but her instructing voice is so good. You know when you can go to a class and you listen to someone and you're like, okay, I'm just going to tune out the voice, but I'm going to yeah. do what they're telling me to do. It's like, she's such a pleasure to listen to as she's instructing. So that was the one thing when we started training her as instructor in the old studio. So I'm glad she came back with me and followed me and pursued and she's an amazing instructor so totally and she's really passionate about this stuff too mm -hmm. so it's always good to see in the fitness industry it doesn't matter what kind of fitness you do like when you're making a person more active and giving them that place to get rid of stress mm -hmm. you're you're doing a good thing yeah um she recommended you based on like your ability to overcome some pretty tough things <laughs> that that get tossed your way in life and also being mm -hmm. like uh sort of a, a leader in, in business and in, in fitness and like taking a dream, a passion and just running with it. 
um, when I was researching, one of the things I did was I looked for a video to try and pronounce your last name, and then I was like memorizing it, memorizing it, and I still messed it up, but I knew there would be videos about you because I saw the story of one of your, your son. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want you to tell our audience a little bit of backstory about some of the obstacles and, and some of the stuff there. So 10 years ago, my son got diagnosed with a brain tumor. And it's when you're in the stallery, when you have a child that has health issues, it's we've always owned a trucking company. So I did the books and it's made it very hard for me to actually go out, have a nine to five job because you don't know when his surgeon's going to call. You don't know when a doctor's going to call. So that's what made me pursue the fitness because then I knew I could have my own hours and having him as a sick boy and in and out of the hospital it just no one would hire me in that ground so that's why I decided to become a fitness instructor and I've always liked fitness like I would go to Millennium I would go to Glen Allen Rec Center and I'd have my little posse my mom maybe two three people and I would put them through workouts and they're like you should be a fitness instructor so hearing that over months over years like even when I had the kids put them in the daycare and then I'd just little instruct because I wasn't certified at that time and then just hearing that so I'm like you know I'm going to look into this a little bit more it would give me my own hours having and then we had kid after kid so long story short we have five kids now and when I started five years ago it was good because I could teach my class I could go tend to my kid and if he was sick or if we were in the hospital then I would just give up those classes so that is why I closed down the studio of this year it was a hard decision I'm sure I could have use my force and my energy but he had his second tumor brain tumor taken out the end of February and it's just one of those things those days that you can have with your child and you never know anyone's story like so many people in Sherrod Park I would walk into that door and you'd see one lady crying or one leaving throughout class because she couldn't do it like you don't know what's going on in their life and there is so many times I would teach and then I would just leave that student and I would just start to cry and they'd be like, what's going on? I said, oh, my son's really sick. It's touch and go right now. And no one knew. They're like, you come into that studio, you leave it at the door. They're there for your energy. You want their energy. You give them the best class that you can and go on with it. And it's those people that made me keep pursuing and that's why I reopened here. But yeah, he's been in and out of the hospital since the end of February at the stallery didn't go as diagnosed as last tumor so he lost mobility on his right side and he wasn't able to write so we've been at the Glen Rose since the end end of July middle of August so there was just no way that I could have ran a studio and um, I'm sure I could have but I didn't actually have the energy to do it so he's been now out of the Glen Rose and yeah he's been all over the news it's It's great to get mobility on his right side. He's been getting hockey sticks and him and his OT at the Glen Rose discovered that, hey, you like hockey. If you use a screwdriver, this is gonna try and get you some strength in your right hand. So we made this Ariane Duck chair for his dad for Father's Day. And then Chris just posted it and my husband and it went crazy. And Peyton's like, can I make a few more of these chairs? So then, he made a couple more and now it's gone really crazy because it's it's his passion like and it is actually strengthening his right side so mentally physically because when you have a brain tumor removed you're left with quite a bit of brain injury so yes the tumor has gone as of November 15th but his mental illness was it was touch and go if something happened with that tumor we're lucky that we still have him because of how mentally ill he was so to give him this passion making these chairs and knowing that i can come teach here i can leave everything at the door come and teach my clients and then he goes and works on his chairs and it just seems like we finally all have gotten back onto our feet and it's just my passion and i think if there's one thing i can do it's the most rewarding job having someone come in here and know that they can leave their troubles at the door and come in and two weeks later start seeing results, whether it's bending over a little bit further or whether going through a whole pound class without stopping. And it's just, I'm just like, oh, that's rewarding to me. So it's just, it's touch and go with the kids. And it's crazy that 
I would want to open my own studio again instead of just go and teach, but I just find it very rewarding. So yeah, the health issues, the obstacles that we've overcome this year has probably been the most obstacles that we've overcome in the past 10 years. So now that we're back on our feet somewhat, you just move forward because you can't look at the past and, and dwell on it, right? So yeah. Absolutely. That's something that so many people can resonate with. Like from, from your point you made about people going to the studio, you don't know everybody's story mm -hmm. because I'm, because I have experience with like group fitness teaching spin, which I stepped away from. Um, I, I can see things from like the group fitness standpoint and I can see things from the personal trainer standpoint personal training it's really easy to make that connection with the person mm -hmm. like you're looking them right in the eye group fitness you have like your front entrance you have the desk you have all these people coming through like some people will go to a studio for the first time and they won't they won't get that connection kind of thing mm -hmm. or maybe they do but it, it doesn't feel real kind of thing so it really stands out when when there's a space where people actually make a connection and actually follow up and they say how are you doing and if you mm -hmm. said uh not so good they will follow up kind of thing mm -hmm. or people who have the intuition to like see a person walk in the door see see how they're holding themselves and know that something's wrong mm -hmm. and know that sometimes just being present and being attentive is going to be the the game changer for their day yeah like Fitness is such an underrated thing in how it can help people through some of their biggest obstacles. Oh, exactly. So with with your journey into bar, did you have any dance background or was it all just kind of group fitness and then just moved from there kind of thing? Well, bar is a fusion of Pilates, yoga and ballet. And I am probably the least graceful that there is out there because I was a Ukrainian dancer. So I've never been high on my toes and holding my shoulders back. Yeah, you still kind of do that with Ukrainian dance, but it's a lot quicker pace and you fall out of alignment. So no, I didn't have any, any dance background, but I just, I love the movement of bar and then I love the high energy of pound. So they're two totally different workouts, but I think because bar can help so many people, not just physically but it's a good way of therapy like physical therapy so you have a back issue you have a knee issue you can get someone through a class like my mom has hip back knee shoulder and this is one class that she loves coming to that's awesome is she a regular here she's a regular four I mean, times a week at crap. least oh yeah that's awesome does and she get a special deal because you know well yeah she does that's good yeah that's she good. she helps me a lot so i'll help i'll help her keep her fit because i need that lady around for a long time <laughs> totally that's awesome I, I love when like family gets involved with fitness mm -hmm. i know even with with my my parents i'll go visit them and i'll show my dad how to do a dead bug and then my mom will laugh because he's on the ground flailing his limbs in the air but you know yeah. like little bits and pieces uh, I find like when we're passionate about something, it tends to, to rub off on the people mm -hmm. around us. Like sometimes when I'm feeling down in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll be like, ha, because of me, some poor sucker feels pressured to go into the gym. <laughs> Whether true. they're my client or not, they just know, ah, oh, crap, I got to do this because <laughs> Chris is doing it. So Or because of you, they can't get out of bed because of the workout they did prior, right? Oh, that but it's true. that feel good workout. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I try not to dehabilitate people with like heavy leg days or anything, but you know, yeah. the odd day they'll, they'll feel it when they're walking the stairs at the mall or something. Yeah. Um, so how about your other kids? You have five kids, five kids, so a lot of kids. Yeah. Four girls and then my boy. So okay. actually all of my family, it seems like they've migrated to what I do because the bar, like I've always had boys at the bar or date night, which I'm hoping to bring back into here in the new year. So my husband has come to bar a few times, didn't love it, but he'll come. Cause I'm like, Oh, date night. Like you have to come. And then my two little, so I have age eight, 10, 13, Peyton's 14, our boy, and then a 16 year old. So my two little girls, I actually go and teach uh, fit kids at their school. And they asked me to do pound and it's crazy how much these grade three to sixers love this workout. 
because they're constantly doing something they have to pay attention and then just from that the teachers asked if I can come in after school to teach bar and pound as their workout so then they don't come here I, I go to them they do their workout and then my daughter 16 year old and my 13 year old come probably once a week and they'll try bar they'll do pound I've taken them to hot Pilates so the only one I haven't got in here yet is Peyton so I'll, I'll work on him but he started doing dry land with his hockey team nice so but yeah so it, it is you're right it just rubs off on anyone and there's quite a few instructors moms that have also come and they stuck to the workout or else they followed us to whatever studio because I have quite a few instructors that came with me from the old studio so yeah it's just awesome. yeah where where is off on them well especially when I'm practicing pound <coughs> in the kitchen yeah banging these sticks because I have to rehearse this new song and so the littles grab the sticks and they are doing it behind me so yeah that stuff gets catchy too it does like for myself as a as a drummer I see a little bit of differentiation into when you're hitting the beat but mm -hmm. like when you get into like the flow of things like you can't help but but join in yeah exactly and so and also it's it just takes away so much the in intimidation for so many people like I value the the different fitness things for for that reason mm -hmm. because someone that is just too scared to be lifting weights in a gym around other people that are doing like 300 pound deadlifts mm -hmm. like at least that'll get them moving yeah they'll get their heart rate up they'll get those endorphins that they need and it'll be good for their mental health gets them in that community with people that support them yeah i think community is probably one of the most underappreciated things these days with social media growing so mm -hmm. much like one of my rules that i try to enforce for my podcast is i try to do episodes in person Mm -hmm. because then you're actually like you actually have to make this commitment that like I, I had a bit of a, a time finding this space because <laughs> there's not exactly a sign on the door but I used like my process of elimination and yeah. I was like oh well it's close to this place and <laughs> numbers and addresses all that things but that whole motion of, of coming here and knowing that I had committed this time to this interview mm -hmm it's good it's like you're making space in your life for other people to, to share stories to learn more about other people mm -hmm. rather than just oh I made this inspirational post with a curated picture and 5,000 people liked it and now I sell free water bottles or something yeah. like that like oh that's so true influencer <laughs> thing is is good but it's also bad like mm -hmm. it can empower people but it can also make people very closed off and very susceptible to obstacles. Like if something went wrong, where where's their support circle? Mm -hmm. Where's where's their real people to, to lean on? Where's that human connection? Yeah. So I'm glad that there's so many different ways to, to get that back in this day and age where we're attached to our phones. Like Oh. I I'm, I'm guilty of it. I have my phone all the time. I'm staring at it lots, but at least at least I can talk about it in a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and admit to it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's, I know when we do, like there are some days, you know, you're just having one of those days and you're like, really, I have to go in there and teach. And especially some of those days that I have, and you just don't know how you're going to get yourself in front of people, give some energy to them because you have absolutely none yourself. So those days I could have a heck of a day with the kids and I know that I'm going to go teach pound. And for those that don't know pound, it's such a high energy, 45 minutes. You have no idea that you're working out because you're just sitting there with these weighted drumsticks in your hand. And you're like, what the heck is she going to do? She's turned off the light. She has a disco ball going. She has the black lights on and some strip light. And <laughs> it is dark in that studio. So when they walk in for the first time, it's pretty amazing. But then... When they hit those sticks for the first time, it's like they're face. It's like they're a Christmas tree. Their face lights up. They're like, "Okay, let's do this." And even when the music starts, and the first time I hit those sticks after one of those days, I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna break one of these things today." And then after, there's even in some cool down, I look out, and there's people crying, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" Like I'm sorry. Like first thing you think is that they hit their hand with those sticks because they have no give. And they're like, no, that Cool Dawn song, I am so happy 
that I took this time for me. And I came and did a workout. I had no idea what I was getting into, but it was so high energy. You made it so fun. I couldn't help but smile. And I'm glad I took that 45 minutes for myself. And I'm just ex reciprocate the same way because I look at these people I'm like, they chose me to come and spend their 45 minutes, their hour with. They, there's so much competition out there, but I'm so grateful that they chose me. And then in the same sense, I'm like, hey, try this workout, try this. Shock your body a bit. Don't get into that comfort zone. Like go and try out. There's so many of us, small studios, go and give all of us a try. And you know that you win their hearts knowing that you have their support. I have... And they have my support if they want to try another one. Yeah, of course, you want to keep your clientele, and you usually do. But just knowing that, hey, go try hot Pilates. It's a great workout, you know. But, yeah, it's that passion. And for someone to choose their passion and me be their passion, it's it's, it's pretty cool. And it's awesome. I, t I totally know what you're talking about with seeing, like, uh, a client outside after the class. Mm -hmm. Just, like kind of crying pretty much yeah and with with the cool down song too because uh something that's unique about me versus other trainers in town is there's probably very few to no trainers that are as like involved in spin as i am mm -hmm. so i see things from both sides and i know what that emotion is it's like they call it flow state and it's basically i would best describe it as I've figured out all these things that were in my way and then finally I, I found that I could could just overcome it mm -hmm. and whether that be with the other bodies in the room or with some mm -hmm. physical overcoming in it and then you get that paired with just the right song and you feel that energy and you just feel it unstoppable mm -hmm. and the great thing is no matter what people do for that, they can apply that to like real life. Like I am confident that if, if I can get a person to flow state, I can get them so that they would be confident enough to ask for a raise or they could be more confident just walking around mm -hmm. just cause they don't, their self talk gets so much more positive and well, I mean, their, their physical appearance is going to change too. Mm -hmm. And like looking at yourself in the mirror, there's never anything bad to say about looking yourself in the mirror and thinking, yes, I, I am proud of that person. Yeah. But just that whole like facing that mental block, because physically if we can get there, but continue and then you just get over that hump and then keep going kind of thing that mm -hmm. it's such a good mental trigger. Um, because that's really the only thing that ever holds us back is our self-talk, what's mm -hmm. in our head and those little emotions that we get so good at feeling. We get so good at like talking ourselves down and just dragging ourselves down. So fitness being a modality where like you can talk yourself up and whether it, it's like a corny thing or whatever, like <laughs> you're able to pump yourself up. Yeah. Now that I say corny, it is important. I think some of the best instructors of any fitness thing or best trainers are very sincere, very genuine. Mm -hmm. They, everybody has a different story, but if they're able to tell their story, it makes them a lot easier to, to sort of buy into or to create that like long lasting bond. Mm -hmm. um, most of my, a lot of my trainer friends have some, some sports background. Some of them got injured. Some of them, it's like a weight loss story, but they all have a story of, of some sort. Mm -hmm. Some of them, it was like facing anxiety. So I'll, I'll hear people talk about how they want to get better at their motivation. They want to like come up with better things to say for motivation. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, well, that's not quite how it works. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't just uh, go on the Instagram, look up the quotes, memorize them and just say them out one after another. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how good of a speaker you are, how good you are at like... Uh, saying like using your voice to uh, present a quote mm -hmm. people people know people yeah. can tell yeah I think the, you can tell when it's rehearsed totally <laughs> or if it's coming from your heart right like if you lived it out or if you didn't kind of thing people mm -hmm. know the most powerful impactful moments I've ever had are when somebody was pretty much just vulnerable and I know that's like a buzzword everybody likes using that word 
this year, mm -hmm. last year, vulnerable, authentic, all those words. But when a person shares like their weakness, when, when they can show you like, look, like this is where I fell down <laughs> and here I am with you telling you I'm not afraid let's do this kind of thing that's mm -hmm. what people do. oh yeah let's do yeah. this you're me i get you <laughs> yeah like they're they're on your team yeah and it's it makes such a huge impact so any i know i'll probably have a couple of spin instructors listening to this so if, if you're ever thinking about like what can i do to be more motivational just be your damn self mm -hmm. i can't say that enough yeah and speak to what has made you who you are don't try and take somebody else's story. Exactly. Well, I know there's a few mornings I come into this place, turn on the music, and I'm like, oh, go into the bathroom, and I literally have a good cry. And I look in the mirror, I'm like, can't do this. I cannot do this today. And then I'm like, oh, no, there's people registered in class. Yes, you can do this. You're going to go do this. So then I walk in, and they're sitting on their mats, and, you know, all eyes on you, and they could tell that I've been crying. I'm like, okay, I just had a good cry not having the best day so i'm sorry because you're probably going to get one heck of a workout and once the music starts we're all going to bring our energy to the middle of the floor and get this started and then they just after class are like wow you felt like crappier than crap when you walked in and now we're not going to be really moving too fast tomorrow so thank you they're like how did you put that i'm like the music started these songs especially throwback thursday like those songs and i would tell them i'm like yeah, you know, when you're at the bar, really drunk, and I think you're alone now comes on, I can do a good dance to this song. And they're like, yeah, we can too. So it's just, you know, getting them involved in the workout instead of like, and one, two, you've got this, let's keep going. But having that talk with them, I'm like, okay, pretend you're at the bar. Let's see how low those hips go. Let's see how they can go side to side. And they're like, wow, how the heck did she pull that out of her sleeve and present a class like that? But it's, it's the people and it's being yourself. Like I could have came in here and all like flamboyant and fake, but I'm like, look, I just had a good cry. It was the worst day ever, worst morning ever. And, but here I am, we're all here. We all showed up. That's the most we can do. And let's make the best of it. And it, those are probably one of the best classes that I ever teach is when I just come in and you have to be open with them. Totally. So instead of like, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. Best day ever. <laughs> Well, those are the, the best classes I've attended of people's as well. Like a lot of karma classes turn out to be like barn burners. Mm -hmm. If it's usually if it's a cause that the person can really resonate with, like, oh, you're, you're in for it. Mm -hmm. like, that person's going to light the place up and most people are bought, bought into it because whether they're there because they support the cause or they support the person supporting the cause, like mm -hmm. they're bought in, they care. You'd be amazed, or well, you wouldn't be amazed, but some people might be amazed <laughs> with how much their their clients buy into them. Yeah. Like when you have a group fitness studio or when you're a trainer with like a roster of clients, like those people are your biggest fans. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty amazing when you sit down and think about it. It's like, wow, like as much as I think that I'm cheering for them, they're cheering for me just as hard, mm -hmm. which is great. And it it's, is. It's the value of just being who you are. Because what would happen if we ran out of material to be like a fake person, rah, 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 so inspirational? Like when we run out of material, what do we have? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we're just like who we are naturally, and if we have a bad day, we say we have a bad day. And if we didn't look good one day, we just look that way. Like if we're that way, we got nothing to lose. Yeah. We're on like a, a strong footing, we're stable, we're safe, we're secure, we're supported. So we're going to do an activity describing each of your kids with like one to three words. Start with the oldest, go to the youngest. Okay, oldest, you want me to say their names in age too? Up to you. All right, Paige, 16, amazing, beautiful, very, she's the second mom in the family and not because I wanted her to be, but she is, she put it this way, she has made parenting completely easy. Peyton, 14, only boy, challenging, not that he chooses to be, but probably my kid with the biggest heart. Cruz, 13, 
quiet, tiny, academically, probably the smartest person I know. Cadence, 10, super challenging, very, very much the boss in the house, and loud. And Courtney, added bonus, she's eight, and she's an old soul in a little body. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. If you had three values that you wanted them to instill going forward, what would they be and how would you demonstrate that to them? Um, I do demonstrate and want them to learn to be yourself. Don't judge someone by their outside cover and don't stop believing in yourself and others. And I tell them daily to treat people as you want to be treated. So they're, yeah, they're very motivational to me and I'm sure I motivate them, but it's the strength that they have, the five of them together, they complement each other. Do they get along pretty good? They do. as a little team? They do, That's yeah, good. they do. And they support like Peyton's hockey team. He doesn't play. He can't play hockey right now, but he goes in between games, but all four girls come to every single game That's and amazing. he's not even playing. Yeah. So, but they support when someone's not doing right. And it's crazy because it's the 16 year old and the eight year old, they'll hang out or Peyton has a paper route. Well, that's the two littles that go and help. And yeah, they, there is fighting once in a while, but I think cause there's so many of them that if one ticks one off, they just move on to another. But they're so encouraging. They root each other on, they're encouraging, they will make time for each other. And they have quite the rules with those devices because I always tell them, since these devices have came into place, you've lost your personality. Like, please don't let these take over your personality. Have a conversation. So they can't have their phones, iPads, anything after supper, and they can't have them on Sunday. And it is crazy the games, board games that they play, the games that they make up and play, the activities they do outside. So that's one thing, I just want them to be themselves. And I remember one time I told, we were having supper and Paige did really good. She just got her license, no problem. She's doesn't get invited to some of these huge parties where you're only on the list because of certain things. So to me, that makes me proud. And I just tell them, I'm like, you guys are very lucky that you have Paige to follow in, like her footsteps to follow in. And this is how they're their unique person because my 10 year old, she's like, I'm not following in her footsteps. I'm like, well, of course you aren't. And she looks at me, she goes, you always tell us to be our own person and I have my own footsteps, so I'm gonna follow in my own. And I'm like, okay, well, what do I say to that, right? That's profound, <laughs> like my brain just exploded. Oh. Nicely put. I'm like, <laughs> you're right, Cadence. Don't follow in anyone else's footsteps. You be your own person. She goes, well, that's what you always told us. But I've never said it in those words. So I yeah. guess that's how they've interpreted the values that I want them to take forward instead of being someone fake and someone that they aren't. And I think growing up with their brother, like special needs, he's been in a wheelchair. And I think experiencing that, it's made us strong as a family. It's made them strong as kids because now you know they would look at someone and whether they're using a walker or they're in a wheelchair and they look at me now and they're like could you imagine the challenges that they have but look they're still smiling you know and so like what's wrong with that person and doing that so i think it's really strengthened them and realize that hey life doesn't come easy you're not entitled to anything you're not given a silver platter what you're going to get, whether it be at your sports, academics, you work towards that and you're going to get far because of what you're doing, not because of whose butt I'm kissing to get you somewhere else. So I think they just like they're not spoiled and they're not entitled. They have their chores. But even when we walk into the stallery and the neurosurgeons look at Chris and I and they're like, hats off to you guys for staying together. Like 89% of the stallery families are separated. And he's like, what do you guys do? I'm like, we stick together. Like we don't let all of that social media overcome because nowadays it's different raising a 16 year old and I'm worried as what my eight year old is gonna overcome. But 
you just keep your grounds, keep your beliefs and your values and make time for each other. And that's what they do. And I think because they do make time for each other, I think that's why they're so caring and loving. And that'll go forward like 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Like they're going to be probably pretty tight. They're mm-hmm. going to support each other. They're each going to have their own families, their own things that they do. And yeah. you still need that support. So it's so important that it's being built in early on. That's right. And I like that uh, cell phone rule too. That's solid. <laughs> well, I can't stand those things because, you know, you would go with them <coughs> and that's our time when we're driving somewhere, but they're on their cell phones. I'm like, hey, talk to me. But after supper, like, okay, I'll give it to you after school. Take that low down if you need to do your Snapchats or games or whatever you have to do. But after supper, it's homework. We're doing things as a family. We're going to sporting events. And I don't want to see your eyes glued to that. And then Sundays, it's usually the one day that the seven of us are actually home at the same time. So we make time for each other instead of on those phones. And I don't like how it staring at that phone right before they go to bed, their brain doesn't shut down. So then they're crazy tired in the morning and then who gets to deal with it? Me. So it's like <laughs> I do boot camp classes before I even get to the studio. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's good. I just don't want them to lose who they are. Yeah. And it's the social media, like so many kids at my daughter's school, how they're bullied and right to where the kid is taking their own life because of how it goes so far on social media. And I told her, I said, when you don't like someone when I went to school, you'd take a roll of pennies, you'd have a good physical fight, usually not cause much harm, and then be done with it. It didn't yeah. get streamed along social media and it didn't carry on and on to make the person feel like a piece of crap. So she's like, really? I said, yeah. But now one person, like there used to be this little chat group where it's like ganging up on people. But one person put something and then, and I'm like, you're not getting tied into that. Mm-hmm. So it's different, but I'm like, don't, don't be fake, chin high. Someone says something to you, turn around and fight your battle. Like if you don't agree with what they said, speak up. Yeah. And you're not going to speak up and learn how to do anything if your head is glued to that phone. Well, even like myself growing up, because I'm 26, so like I kind of have the mixed bag. I've I've had like the traditional upbringing where you can grab a stick and that can be a lightsaber, a gun, a typewriter, and like 12 other things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I've also like, I had internet in my early teens and stuff, like started off with dial-up, so it took forever to do anything. Yeah. Like I was exposed to things like MSN Messenger and all those different things, and that became more and more like a a mode of communication but I also did like the the bike rides with friends and stuff like that where like you'd have to physically go to see the person to talk to them Mm -hmm. um and yeah I can totally agree with like when when you have a dispute with somebody rather than letting it bubble 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 over like online platforms actually just like figure it out like Mm -hmm. I'm guilty for, uh, I think it was like grade four or something. I threw a kid onto like the sand and just pinned him down. I was like, stop <laughs> doing that. And it's like probably the most aggressive I've ever been in my whole life just as a kid. Yeah. But they obviously aggravated me. They had it coming. <laughs> but like to actually live your life outside of, of a screen mm-hmm. and continue. Because like phones are great tools. But I've also like been chilling with my my two nieces and the youngest one was playing a game and I was like, so like, how's school? And she's like, hold on, I'm just like turning a corner in this game. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> but it was just one time that I, I really noticed that. I think uh, my my brother and my sister-in-law do a really good job of raising them and mm-hmm. they listen to the podcast. So okay. I, I hope that they get any little tidbits that that are new to them yeah but i also am pretty proud of them for for how they raise my nieces because they're good Mm -hmm. kids yeah so i like to hear about all the different tips and tricks like one day i'll be reflecting on all these past episodes i'm like now i have all the hacks i've gathered them from (laughs) leaders of business and fitness all over all over edmonton so i got all the the tricks yeah (laughs) so yeah, um, it's probably that's what my friends say. They're like, you're the one person that when the phone rings, we know it's you. You're probably the one only friend that we have that will pick up a phone and call instead of text. Yeah. So, and I'm, it's just, it's crazy because I have so, 
like a lot of support group a lot of our friends are so supportive yeah and it just is mind-boggling sometimes how people let like social media and let so much get in the way of actually interacting with each other like I'm like oh yeah I'm free like let's go for lunch and everyone nowadays it seems like everyone's so busy to make time for themselves time for each other and like how do you always meet us for lunch you have five kids you own a business you guys had a trucking company like I'm like well you want to meet me for lunch I will make time for you I said we don't have to do a whole afternoon lunch but I think that's just important that I followed my passion because of how rewarding it is but also you just need to make time for yourself and do what you want instead of just catering to someone else all the time Exactly. So, so I want to give a bit more of a, a promotion to uh, your your son's hockey stick project. Um, I think I saw in one of the videos that was online that he has like a shop that he does his his mm-hmm. chairs out of now. Yes. So it started with my mom wanting to buy a chair and a couple other people, and then how did it come about? Jason Greger played in the Alzheimer's hockey game with my husband. And Chris is like, you know what? I'm not too sure what route or which way Peyton can go. Like all his medical team, he'll never be on his own. Like he won't be able to be on his own. He's going to apply for age. And Chris is like, maybe this is going to be a good job. And Peyton's like, I would love that. So, and then he's the one that came up and said, you know what? I just, I want to make these chairs. Can I sell them? He goes, but I want to give some back to Anne. And I'm like, well, Anne is your OT at the Glen Rose, so I don't think she's going to personally take money. I said, but we can give back to the Glen Rose. And he goes, I'd like that because they've really helped me out. Like he's been years at the Glen Rose. So then Chris just messaged up Jason Greger. He does 1260 TSN. And he's like, hey, my son makes these chairs. We're in need of hockey sticks because these chairs take a ton. And he's like, can you give me the lowdown on your son? He goes, no, I can't. My wife's a lot better at that. So she'll talk to you. I'm like, oh my gosh, Chris. And it's right when I opened here. I was teaching so many classes, lost my voice, everything. So hats off to Jason that even understood anything I was talking (laughs) to him on the phone. Hence, my voice still isn't good. But so then he did this amazing article on Oilers Nation. And it had to do with our family, with Peyton, with the Short Park Kings accepting him as honorary captain not able to play but the circle how it got him involved and his article is called hockey heels and it is the most inspirational read that i read and especially hearing about my son in someone else's words and i just looked at peyton i said you're clearly my hero like it is crazy the read so then city news got a hold of it ctv news global got a hold of it And that's why he was on the news that second week, first week in November, because they're like, hey, this is incredible. He can't play hockey, but yet he's trying to make these chairs. He doesn't, like he'll, within 20 minutes, do some work and he has to take a break. Like he fatigues and I don't think I would ever realize what he has to endure daily. And so that news article, those um, news stories went out and my husband works for Streamline Mechanical and he was just telling like his boss and a couple guys and he's like you know what we'll clear this part of the shop this is all for Peyton. Peyton had to go in go through a safety meeting he wears the safety goggles there's some supervisors there that are assigned to Peyton when he goes in there and they're right by his side and work on his chairs with him. So then orders came in and after all of the news stories well then we were getting people calling the house and there's a few drop-off bins like throughout the city that have drop-off bins for sticks vimy academy got a hold of it brought us all their sticks and people were just ordering chairs hey can i have this one can i have that one and he puts them color coordinates so they're not just like yeah here's some more sticks put them (laughs) together he's like i want to make this one i want to do this kind he's like I'm going to make like a Canada Day chair and it's like with all the red and white sticks. So long story short, we're now up to over 60 orders. And then the Oil Kings got a hold of it. They came in on Monday and brought all of 
their sticks that they have and some are signed and some still have the oil king logo and will was his name that came out and just hung out with Peyton. So then Global got a hold of it again and they were out there at the same time right when my uncle arrived from Edson because it went as far as Edson where they collected sticks. We have a lady that owns the Snack Chat, Snack Shack in Yorkton Arena in Saskatchewan. And she has a bin outside of that Snack Shack collecting sticks that she's bringing the end of January. We've had a painter that did Humboldt paintings and he's like I don't have sticks to offer he goes but I want to paint you this picture and it's this little boy on the ice rink with a hockey stick in his hand and he's like this just shows the warrior that you are Peyton and I want to paint this picture and then this other couple in Vernon he's a well-known painter sent this big three by three canvas of Grand Fear and painted it and gave it to Peyton so it's reached so many people it's it's crazy and it's just I guess he touched people's hearts and the support and the hearts that have touched us is overwhelming so he needs a ton of sticks he's does it's he just loves doing it like he doesn't have a short-term memory so he'll go to school in the morning and we pull him out and he's like I learn a lot from this job so that's to him that's his job and you know he went out head high Saturday night he was named as honorary captain and they let him the coach called us and then like can Peyton come out and skate am I for you know as a mom oh gosh no no he can't do that he hasn't been on skate since his last brain surgery he can sometimes barely walk he tips over like he's not going on skates how the team slapped their sticks as he was coming onto the ice like these building the chairs this hockey team it honestly Chris has been such a game changer in our house because it was right up to the beginning of October that we thought Peyton would take his own life where he would ask his sister to help him. So it's, it's just overwhelming and just watching him, his strength, knowing that, heck, I can go on daily. That's why I'm like, you know what? I can open another studio. Yeah, maybe slow. Yeah, maybe it's not going to be as busy. But that's my passion. And if my son has this fight daily to do his best and show me what he can do, it's worn off on me to reopen my studio and show my passion and give to people what I believe in and my passion and hope they share their passion and they do by coming and supporting me here. So it's been, this year has been a whirlwind. Like I can clearly say, yes, it's been the worst year, probably of my whole family's life. But secondly, we've learned so much and we're all like, yay, goodbye 2018. We're gonna kill 2019. Absolutely. So. That's incredible. If somebody wants to support the initiatives that have made Peyton get to where he is, what's the best way? Donate to the Glen Rose, donate to his hockey sticks. Donate to the Glen Rose, the Stollery and I think it touches his heart. Every stick, whether you have one stick, 10 sticks, whenever a stick is dropped off, because we have a bin outside our house, it's just like, he gets that, oh, gotta go make another chair. So then, and then showing that he goes and gives a portion of what he makes to the Glen Rose. So I think donating sticks touches his heart. Yeah. And what's, what's the most convenient location to drop off sticks? We have, well, at the studio here, people can drop off at the studio, the sports closets, Insured Park Mall, St. Albert Mall, TSN Studio, Tier 1, they're in, they're a company in St. Albert. It is listed on my Facebook. And also even just messaging us because we're more than happy to come and pick up the sticks. So anyway, or even at Streamline Mechanical, they're just off Highway 16 and Highway 21. So. And what about people that want to buy a chair? What's, what's the best way to do that? They can contact us at our home phone number. Cool. And um, even message us on Facebook, but 780-467-8610. And yeah, we have a lady, I'm not too sure where she is. She's like, I love these chairs. Can I have six for my backyard? So it's, it's, it's heartwarming. So yeah, that's usually Facebook is the easiest way, whether yeah. they don't want to direct message me or private message me. Cause then at least I have 
something to go back on. Totally. But we've had numerous calls into our house. Hey, can I get a chair? Hey, I want to support. And I think it's just touched how this boy, and he's not a small boy, like he's six, two and a half. He's only 14 years old. But just showing his motivation for his passion, and he loves it. And he will literally sit in every chair and make sure that's comfy, make sure it's not wobbling. But it's even watching him tape the end of those sticks for the seat part, for the back part of his chairs. And you take for granted your health because watching my son, he has to take a break after each taping of that stick. And you just take for granted. And he's highly medicated right now. And his psychiatrist told us, she's like, what Peyton has to understand, your family, your friends, the community, is he does his best daily. And he'll give you 110%, and that is his best. And if someone doesn't accept his best, then they're not worth being in Peyton's life. And I've told him that because he's been very bullied. He's lost all of his friends. He doesn't have very many friends that would come and hang out prior to being on this hockey team. He has a great little friend now that actually even misses school to come and help him. But this hockey team, they're 16, they're 17 year olds. It's midget double A. They have other things I'm sure that they want to do, but hockey's their passion and they put their heart on their sleeves and how they've just brought Peyton in is overwhelming. He would message them one day, hey, anyone want to hang out? One moment I look, open my eyes, 14 guys are in Peyton's room. I love it. I'm like, what are, and it was a Saturday night and they just all came. They're like, yeah, let's hang out. And they all came. So remarkable young men, like hats go off because they don't know how they've changed my son's life and making these chairs, like just people supporting the sticks. So, and he, he doesn't even realize that he's been on the news so much. He doesn't realize when a camera is in front of him. And he has a mentality of a grade three, grade fiver. But it, nothing has gotten to his head. He's just like, oh, that was fun, hey? I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's awesome. So it's, yeah, he's just, he's himself. What you see is what you get. And that's pretty much with everyone in our family. You come into our house, not going to get no special treatment. You're, <laughs> you're one of us now. You walk through that door, good luck to you. Now you're one of us. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, donating sticks is the best. Like I say, one chair takes 12 to 15 sticks. And if he has over... 60 orders so he's looking at a good 800 900 sticks like as of now but now this has gone spiral again because he was on the news last night again yeah so now we've gained more messages and sometimes the right person hears the right thing like my my podcast has a fairly humble following mm-hmm. but there's a lot of game changers that listen to it mm-hmm. how much how much do the chairs typically run for they're 150 now but realizing how much time it takes Peyton and the material and he gives 20% to the Glen Rose um, we just think after he buys the material on that and his time like he would do it no problem but if we're looking at this as a little job for him so right now they're 150 we were thinking of maybe putting them to $200 and create a good cushion if he has to apply for age like just looking out for his future and it's something that he enjoys doing and that's something that makes sense and i think a lot of people would support that mm -hmm. stand by it Mm -hmm. um it sounds like a pretty appealing chair for like maybe if if somebody was getting their new place they need a new chair for their new house Mm -hmm. or christmas gift kind of thing yeah so i think that could get a lot of people people thinking about what they're gonna what they're gonna get for for christmas gift or for just a little sentimental gift that has so much meaning to it mm-hmm. and does so much good well literally you men are hard to buy for totally. <laughs> like, so it's hard but even um one of the moms the goalie's mom on the team she's like we donated those sticks she goes i wonder if peyton can put because each chair takes up two goalie paddles so she goes can peyton make a chair with some of blake's sticks in it and he did and Peyton the mom told me how special this one stick was and Peyton's like well I can't use it it's broken in half but what he did is took the good part of that half and put it on the side of the chair so it was so he's getting this chair for Christmas and he kept the blades on the goalie stick so instead of the average arms he kept the blade so it's Blake's goalie sticks 
on these chairs. And then heartwarming, Tylene Trophy was so nice. He created a logo with two sticks and the brain tumor ribbon and put Peyton's project for each chair. So he donated these metal plaques to stick on each chair. That's awesome. It is. It's the community. It's been overwhelming or even like the city, the province and streaming into BC and Saskatchewan. Like it is amazing. And it's just, we call him our hero every day. And if you're just having one of those days and you know, something didn't go right, or you think you're entitled to something, it's, that's what the coach said of the hockey team. He's like, you don't realize how it's made the boys on this team realize you just don't get what's always given. You need to fight for what you have. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very heartwarming. I learn a lot from him. Totally. Well, I think everybody that listens to this is going to be pretty inspired. And they'll have a lot to take away from this. And usually with, with any of the show notes and stuff, I'll always leave links to like the different foundations, like the different charities. I'll uh, leave some uh, links to the videos for reference so Mm -hmm. that people can kind of get the other perspective and I'll add in that article that was on Oilers Nation because that sounds Mm -hmm. like a good read. It, it's incredible. It, you'll leave that article and you'll be like, I'll honestly probably cry. Oh yeah. (laughs) I don't think, well, even when Peyton went on the ice on Saturday, I don't think there was a dry eye, but we've had so many people that read that article and even like some of the moms on the hockey team been like, what? We had no idea. It stems from Peyton's life. It stems to how, because he got denied to be on a team. All he wanted to do was be a water boy. I'm not going to say what team, but that crushed him. And that made the beginning of October so hard for Peyton. So yeah. hard. So Logan, one of the players on the Kings, his mom asked me one time, she was like, do you know the coach? Do you know this Tyler Steele? And I'm like, Tyler? Yes, of course I know him. He goes to Camp Everest. That's the only camp Peyton can go to. It's a brain, kids for brain tumor, brain cancer. And you have nurses going, you have their neurosurgeons going, their neurologists going. And it's a camp for these kids to be who they are, not be judged, not be bullied. And Tyler goes, he always went because of his nephew. Unfortunately, his nephew passed and he kept going. And it was because of Tyler that wanted Peyton to keep going to this camp. And it was hard for me to let him go for the four days, but he loved going. So when I'm like, yeah, of course I know this guy. She's like, well, this is Logan's head coach. I'm like, oh, he's a fabulous man. Not knowing. So then Logan approached this coach to see if Peyton can be part of the team. He's like, like, can we have him in the dressing room? Can he go on the road trips? So he's gone on road trips. They have suited him with King's gear right down to the coach's coat, to shorts, tracksuit, everything. He goes in the dressing room between periods and he listens to the speech. He fills their water ball, but it's that sense of belonging. So then when Jason approached me, he talked to Logan and he asked Logan, like, why, why would you do this for Peyton? He goes, I saw him being crushed. I saw what it did to him. And I just wanted him to feel that he belonged somewhere. He goes, because I've always belonged on a team and I've never known the feeling of not being able to belong on a team. So seeing Peyton, how he was crushed, Logan took this upon himself talk to the coach well long story coach uh, long story short the coach has been through so many obstacles so jason went in talked to uh, the coach and stemmed as to why this coach is now coaching because of all the obstacles he's faced like it it is the most incredible and that stems right to how the glen rose has helped peyton get mobility like his first tumor being removed he was equivalent to a six month and at the time he was five years old, he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk. We were always at the Glenos. He has left side paralysis. So for it to now trigger his right hand, he doesn't have a dominant hand that he can work with. So Oilers Nation, read it. I encourage anyone to read it and you'll just realize like, hey, my life isn't too bad. I mean, backing into that tree, that wasn't the end of the world right now. Like it, it's, it's crazy how reading someone's story that you don't know, like it not being your friend, not being your family, but a complete stranger's story and an actual physical, real human makes you realize, Hey, you know what? If this kid can get through that and if 
these people have stuck behind them. Yeah, my life isn't that bad and let's go out and support. Like, we've taught so many different values into our kids and just because of their brother, like we drove home from the stallery and we drove past the cemetery. And my kids are like, do you think there's kids in there? So it was at first my little, she's like, what's, what is that? And I said, well, when you pass, that's like a cemetery. So then your loved ones can still come and have that time with you. And then we came from the stallery, we came from seeing Santa and they're like, so those kids don't get to see Santa anymore? I'm like, no, they don't. I said, so that candy cane that you guys were fighting over because one was broken and one was whole, consider yourself lucky because eventually they're all going to be broken when you bite into them. So then the next day I could tell that something triggered in one of my kids and like, so if those kids don't get to see Santa, can we be Santa? So probably for the last six years, we go grab a hot chocolate, we're in our jammies, we put on a Santa hat and we go and put, it's called the Garden of Angels, and we go and put a candy cane on all these kids where these kids are. And to me, when it's Christmas time, the first thing my kids ask is, when are we going to go and see the kids? So I'm just like, my, my son has really, really made my girls strong, and they've just, they've just learned so much. And yeah, it's unfortunate. I don't, I don't bless this upon my worst enemy but you make the most of your days you learn from so many things and you go with it like yeah I could I could have given up I bet you over a hundred times this year I thought I was done and then looking at my husband how tired and he was done and things happened to us this year that I would have never ever thought would have happened but I look I'm like you know what end of the day I have my five kids with me I'm with my husband I don't care if I live in a tent but as long as I have my family with me and my mom like it's incredible what and how she helps us but you know what life can get pretty crappy and I we've hit rock bottom and somehow our head is above water I don't like to say that I torture people but yeah I torture them <laughs> and it's my passion and it's rewarding because I love to see whether it's at the end of the class and they like me again or whether it's two weeks or a month down the road and they're still coming back because this is their happy place. They walk in and they're like, I need this right now. My heels may not be high. I may not pound those sticks right to the floor, but I'm here. Yeah. And that's, that's all I want to see. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Life teaches you things. It doesn't destroy you. It definitely has taught me a lot. It's taught me so much about loyalty of people like this year when we hit rock bottom oh yeah numerous friends that are no longer friends but at the end of the day I have the ones that support me and like me for who I am not because of what I drive not because of where I live not you know they support me and they're there for my kids and me so it's it's crazy life yeah. life is crazy but at the same point it's so rewarding so yeah. What an episode, I tell you. Like, <laughs> if people don't listen to this one, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's many times you don't know how I'm holding all this back, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to look out those windows right now yeah. because I can't look you in the eye because I'm ready to break down. But there's no harm in crying, right? No. If you have emotion, <laughs> you feel that emotion. Yeah. We're going to wrap this up, get to our last question, which I ask every, every guest, and they all answer it a different way. But if you could give people one piece of advice on how to most authentically live your life to the fullest, what would that piece of advice be? Live it to the fullest. Make time for yourself. Treat yourself as number one instead of saying yes to everyone and bending over backwards and doing things to people, especially people that don't appreciate. You're, you're number one and if you're not strong, you're not healthy, you're no good to anyone. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Oh, thank for you. Today. Thanks. I'm sure I'll see you around. Oh, yeah, at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Only a matter of time. <laughs>